Hello friends, family, Blender users, whoever you happen to be. Uh, my name is Tom and I got sent, da 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 da, a Creality Scanner. It's not Christmas yet, but it does feel like it. Um, I'm gonna be talking about what it is, what's in it, and how it works. Okay, so no review can start without a bit of a unboxing, just so you know what's in the, the box. So when you get it, you're gonna see a thing that says Creality. Uh, that is the name of the, um, the company. That, that is why it's there. Uh, either way, uh, you're gonna get this nice carrying case, and the reason you need this carrying case is because there's a lot of stuff in it. I've taken some of the stuff out, but in general, you have a manual. We don't mess with manuals here. Uh, you have the actual scanner, which is actually very small. This is the point of the uh, ferret, I believe. It's like a very um, small scanner in the grand scheme of things, but it has high precision. So you get the scanner, which by the way, has a, uh, a thread on the bottom to like connect to a tripod or something. Uh, speaking of tripods, you get this multi-function, it is a tripod, right? Like you can extend the legs, um, but it's more than that. So you can see, we can connect it at the top and what it actually is, is it's a power bank. So you're gonna see a USB, USB-C slots and a couple dots that will indicate uh, how charged it is. This is so that you can charge the scanner as you do it. Now I'm gonna connect mine to a computer, so it doesn't matter, but I think if you can link it to your phone, maybe that's useful in that case. So we got this. Um, it turns out that these things don't connect automatically, so we get a bit of a uh, transformer. Uh, one side connects to the uh, tripod, and one side connects to the scanner. We're almost done. Uh, you get this little thing. I mean, I feel like it's used for phones, to be honest. I don't know why it's here. And other than that, you get a uh, USB-C cable. Um, I think this runs on standard USB-C. Uh, the nice thing about this USB-C cable is it has those little VGA dongles that you might be used to to fasten the uh, connection. But I, I assume you can use any uh, USB-C cord. It actually comes with two of these, but you only need uh, one. But uh, let me just uh, do a bit of a connection here. So tripod goes into the adapter. And just like that, you have a little scanning stick. Don't call it the ferret, call it the scanning stick. So uh, what we're gonna do now is I'm going to open up the software that it uses, pretty simple software, and we're gonna scan an object or two. So let's get going. Okay, so I basically have my laptop set up over here. You can use, I think you can use your phone or a computer or whatever, but I think a laptop's pretty easy because it's portable. And we're gonna scan some objects, namely a shoe and an egg carton. Uh, we have our ferret scanner. And I guess the only other thing to note is that when you scan things, normal rules apply. You don't wanna scan anything reflective or transparent or something that's too thin uh, because scanners and most you know methods like photogrammetry and all that uh, have trouble with it. So make sure you pick your model correctly and uh, let's begin. Okay, so the first step obviously is to open the Creality Scan software. This is where we're actually going to do our scanning and you are going to see, comes with a bit of a tutorial, uh, you're going to see it says scanner undetected. Please connect to scan. What could that possibly mean? Maybe we need to take the scanner. Right now I'm using USB-C to USB and uh, connect it. And you are going to see uh, that now it has detected. Do I want to start scanning? Yes, I do. Okay, so when you start scanning, it seems like you can pick uh, different aspects of your scan. So uh, do you want to scan a normal object or specialized cases like a face or body? I'm doing objects, so that's fine. Uh, the size is going to be dependent on the size of the object. This can do a big range of stuff. Uh, for me, middle is fine. And then for a feature, do you want to just scan the geometry or also uh, texture information? For now, we're just gonna go with geometry, high quality, and let's use a color instead of no color, just so we can uh, play around with that. So start a scan, and you can see I'm now moving around the scanner and it is uh, showing uh, what's going on. And you also have a bit of a depth map. And you can see as I'm moving this, certain uh, areas come in and out of focus um, of this uh, scanner. So uh, let me take an object. I'm gonna take this shoe and then try uh, scanning it, see what we get. So I'm gonna put my shoe down here. And here you can see it from the scanner's point of view, and you can see it's uh, getting uh, data off of it. Um, last thing to note before we begin, as I change the distance, uh, you're gonna see it tells you if it's uh, too close, perfect, too far, so this is a nice uh, feature to know if you're scanning properly. Okay, let's begin. So I think we just hit this uh, play button uh, to start scanning, and then we just kind of revolve around this thing. So 
Uh, Creality recommends, and this is ge just general principles, uh, you wanna scan pretty slowly, uh, slowly going around your mesh and uh, kind of scanning different parts repeatedly uh, to kind of cover uh, your geometry because it's not necessarily gonna get it on the uh, first pass, right? And basically, uh, if we do this long enough and we cover all the angles, uh, we should get a complete 3D model. Now, one thing that might be difficult is getting the other side of it, but this uh, USB cable is plenty long uh, to do that. So that's why it comes with a super long USB cable. Now, if I move my camera off to the side, you're gonna see it's out of sync. It doesn't have any valid points because it's trying to match uh, previous data. So you just gotta make sure you go back to a piece of data that it recognizes and then it will continue scanning. So sometimes uh, you're gonna run into that and that is an indicator that you are scanning too quickly. Uh, we can go around this whole object, but I think this is a good demo. So at any point, uh, you can just hit uh, the stop, uh, which will complete the scanning. I'm gonna click yes. And then uh, you can see we get a base mesh. Now this isn't the final result. This is just kind of a preview in a sense. Uh, the final geometry is gonna be much denser than this. And that's kind of the point of using the scanner to get like fine detail. But it looks like it got the shoelace and stuff like that. Um, so I think all we do is you can set settings for how it's going to like uh, mesh this thing and optimize it. I'm just gonna use the uh, one click process because I do not care. Click okay. And then we are going to wait a long time. And ideally, uh, we can also extract uh, color information from this. Even though I didn't choose the texture option, I still had that color uh, setting from before. So we're not just going to get geometry, but in some sense, we're going to get the uh, color of the surface. So we're going to see how that works. And then we're going to try a uh, second object just to see how that works. Okay, so you can see the scan is done processing. And remember, I only scanned one side of this. So obviously the other side is not gonna be existent if we don't have that data. Uh, but what you can see is that there's a lot of detail in here that you couldn't necessarily get with photogrammetry, especially if we go to the no color mode and you see the uh, geometry here. You can see it even has like uh, aspects like the little ridges on this shoe. Uh, which are very tiny details. You can see kind of the outline of, I guess this is an ASICS shoe. Uh, so I guess this would be the ASICS thing. Um, of course, scanning and other methods do suffer uh, when it comes to kind of thin geometry with holes. So we wouldn't necessarily expect the shoelaces to be perfect, uh, but that can be fixed manually. That's normally what you do. Uh, but it actually handled parts of this shoelace very well, like the aglet and all this. Here you can see the details of the shoe that it's capturing. So this kind of ASICS logo, which is barely raised off the surface, it was able to tell the depth information on that along with these uh, ridges on the shoe. So now I'm gonna scan a second object and we'll call this done. Okay, so when you're done scanning, of course the thing to do is to download it, although it seems like they have a bunch of links and stuff over here. Uh, we're gonna go to this download or export section you're going to see that this has a bunch of options like a PLY, STL, OBJ. These are kind of the standard file formats for just raw meshes. Um, I'm gonna export this as an OBJ and I'm gonna call this thing shoe because that's what it is. And we're gonna see if we can uh, export this or rather uh, import it uh, into Blender. Okay, I'm going to close up the software, open up Blender and just see if this works. now. Uh, the point of the scan is it's going to be very, very uh, dense, which we can optimize in all this, and the software lets you do that. I just picked the uh, base settings. Uh, so expect a uh, mesh with a lot of geometry. So I'm gonna import OBJ. Of course, you can do this with your own program, although if you're not using Blender, get out of here. Uh, you're gonna see you have a shoe, OBJ, and a material file. This is because of the color information and all that. I'm just gonna import in the OBJ and uh, that's going to take a moment. Okay, so this thing has been imported and you're wondering where's the geometry if it's imported, where is it? Uh, normally these things aren't set to scale unless you do that explicitly. So if we zoom out, you're gonna see, oh, there's the shoe. Uh, so to kind of center this, it's not that big of a deal. We just kind of rotate this position at where it's supposed to be. We're gonna do that on both axes and to center the um, origin, I uh, just go to set origin and then origin to geometry, which is gonna find the uh, center point. So now we can rotate uh, based on an origin and axis that makes sense. So here you can see a very, very dense mesh, which I'm going to scale down and position on the floor. Here you can see a very, very dense mesh that if we go into edit mode, 
and that's going to take a second. You can see it's created all these points right here. And of course, you can run this through a decimation or you could uh, sculpt mode this. That's kind of the point, right? So you have your geometry and then you could just say, oh, I'm going to alter it slightly. I'm going to sculpt on top of it. Uh, you can modify this however uh, you want. And uh, finally, if I go to either look dev or render to see kind of the color information, uh, you can see that's been imported in. Again, we only scanned one side of the shoe. However, um, the MTL, which is the material file, is what imports this, and we just have a basic material. Uh, with this texture, you can see it kind of comes with a, a standard unwrap, which actually is cleaner than most software that I've seen. Um, this just goes into a principled BSDF, kind of very uh, basic setup. So uh, let's scan another object. Okay, so this time we're going to scan an egg carton. The reason for this is because this doesn't violate any of the rules of being a reflective, transparent, etc. Uh, object. It should just be a uh, mesh with a lot of detail, especially a texture detail. So uh, we're going to see how this uh, turns out. Egg carton goes on the table. Uh, settings, I'm going to keep the same. Again, if your mesh is big or smaller, make sure to count for that. And I'm going to make this a new scan, so hello. Uh, by the way, you can scan your face. That's a thing people do. Uh, so uh, you can see here's our egg carton, and there is the geometry. So I'm just going to click play, and we're just going to do a bit of a scan. Again, the more time you spend doing this, uh, the better results you can expect. But I'm just going to keep it simple. Now, by the way, um, I don't really know how much the surface that you scan on matters, like the table. Um, I would imagine a non-reflective surface is ideal. Okay, so once again, our scan is complete. Uh, again, I would recommend using a better surface uh, than I did. Uh, but you can see uh, the scan, for at least the areas that I used it, uh, very high quality. You can almost actually read the text that's on here, especially if we were to export out the uh, texture instead of using a raw uh, geometry with the color attribute like we did. Uh, but you can see this came out pretty good. Um, one thing I would recommend is I think this is better uh, to have this thing on a turntable. So you spin it and keep the scanner in one section rather than going around the object. I think that's kind of standard procedure. Uh, so maybe next time I scan, I'll get a turntable. So just a piece of advice. Uh, but there you go. That is the Creality Ferret Scanner. Uh, thank you for sending this to me. And uh, check it out if this is something you are interested in. Bye.